Hello everyone, welcome to today's training. In today's training, I want to discuss with you my fear of being visible, how it has affected me and how I came to a point where I effectively manage it in a way that it doesn't sabotage my business growth. So from wherever you watch, please head to the description box and grab your free affirmations uh, that are very, very empowering. So my fear of being visible actually held me back for a very long time and I've been dreaming about building a personal brand ever since I was the first time in Canada after I had the payout from my e-commerce venture and I came here and I started my agency and I got a little bit more involved like in how marketing is done on, on this side of the pond I felt a deep 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 desire to build a personal brand however I didn't dare to because I didn't know but I had fear of being visible so i pushed through built my agency through upwork and through recommendations and it started to crumble as i was pregnant it just wasn't the right thing and um although i was working a lot uh, i didn't earn a lot of money and i knew that uh, also in the agency business building a personal brand would be really really important However, there was a lot of things that would hold me back. For example, I was really, really concerned about what everyone from my small little hometown would think if I suddenly start to post YouTube videos. So there was a lot of um, doubt and fear that was holding me back without me actually knowing it, right? And it wasn't until at that time I got into a liquidity crunch. So I got a big payout from the project that I was doing and there was still some amount due and my former business partner chose to not pay and uh, it got to a situation where I had to involve a lawyer etc and I was waiting for that money but because I had bought a flat um, and because I was calculating with that money I actually was in a situation where I had a little bit of a liquidity crunch and I opted for an agency funnel course thing uh, that eventually was my own uh, you know fake guru <laughs> venture if you want um, or you know I don't even want to say fake guru but overhyped course that I ended up not getting the kind of result uh, or support that was promised uh, and I ended up with that uh, putting $12,000 from my saving towards that course and then I was in a really bad situation so it looked like in a couple of months I will have to ask my parents for money <laughs> if you know we can't solve the situation with my former business partner with my lawyer um, I, I will have to to do that, which I didn't want because I moved out when I was 14 and I was working ever since. So my pride, if you don't know, is sky high. And that was the last thing in the world that I wanted to do ever. I'm very, very blessed. And I want to acknowledge that I have family and, and people that I could go to if I was, was ever in that situation. But in that moment, just the pure thought of that felt like dying. So it wasn't until I hit my, what back then felt like my personal rock bottom when I was willing to take the trade-offs that I was thinking being visible would have on me to actually say, you know what, I just have to do this. I just have to put myself out there. Over the time, I noticed um, time and time again that my fear of being visible would really sabotage me in my growth. And what I realized is that it's not the fear of being visible. It's a set of sub fears and limiting beliefs that would show up at different points in the journey and then sabotage or, or lead me to self-sabotage so the way i kind of address this and uh, that that's a learning that i had was from there i will take a, a fear complex that i have and i was i would always chop it down as much as i can until i really dig out the individual limiting beliefs that lead me to the self-sabotaging behavior and then I challenge one at a time hi Renee hi Jessa thank you so much for tuning in so in today's video I kind of want to break down those sub fears that I had I want to discuss how I use them to self-sabotage how I see it with a lot of my now 7600 members happening um, and then what is a more empowering belief and I want to finish off by giving you uh, affirmations that are I find are quite empowering. So you can find them in the description box. But let's quickly talk about the kind of sub fears of the big fear of being visible. The first one is the fear of judgment, right? People will criticize me, right? People will judge me. The people I went to school with will think I'm an idiot. Okay, so um, and that will lead in the beginning to you avoid social media, avoid showing up 
overall, but also as you go and when you did those first steps, every post that I did in the beginning, I was questioning. I kept reading posts for hours before putting them out because I didn't want people to think I'm an idiot. I lost so much time questioning what others will think about me if I share this post that I would lose so much mental capacity and actual time on that. So it was limiting me in that sense. And the way it still sometimes keeps limiting me is that when I don't feel good about myself, when I think I made a mistake or when I think I wasn't good enough on that day, I'll not post, right? The anti there are two antidotes for me personally for this situation. The one is running ads because no matter how you feel, your offers are out there driving traffic, driving people consistently. So that really was a secret weapon and game changer for me in the beginning that no matter how I felt, my ads were out there making me visible, working for me when I didn't feel like showing up. That was one big thing. But the other big thing is that what I'm also doing right now, I've been live, I think, except of one day for the last few weeks. And I've been posting consistently, even if I didn't feel like it, because I knew that how I feel about myself on that day will influence how likely I am to post. And I won't let that happen because I don't want to only show the good things. I want to show the good and the bad things. And these days when I feel really like trash, that's when you see a poem. <laughs> because it's the only thing I can say in that moment without feeling like I'm, I'm making myself too vulnerable. But I have that commitment to every portion of that journey I can, I can share. And people will criticize me. And I am okay with that, right? So... I'm worthy of being seen and heard in any condition. If I feel good about myself, if I feel bad about myself, if I accomplished something along the journey, if I fucked up, I am worthy of being seen and the story is worthy of being told, right? And that, that it's not always sunshine makes the story more meaningful for myself and for everyone. So no hiding when we don't, for me, when I don't feel good enough. Because I think that, that those days when I, don't feel good enough when I struggle are those days when I can show that side of the, of the journey that almost no one is willing to share and with that empower and positively impact people. Next fear I had was the fear of being rejected, right? And <laughs> uh, you will have a lot of that, right? On a flopped lounge, when you did a workshop and nobody signed up, when you did a workshop and people signed up, but you were the only one live. When you go live in your first in your Facebook group for the very first time and people jump on just to jump off a second later and that threading how many people are watching your live number goes back down to zero. All of that feels like rejection. So I'm not accepted. I'm not appreciated. And um, that leads you to avoiding launches, avoiding going live, avoiding every situation where you, you could potentially get rejected, right? And for me... The answer to this was that I'm, I rethought this as I am mending my garden and the butterflies will come. I am doing my work day in and day out with my best abilities. I mend my garden. I show and document my work and my butterflies, the ones that love my flowers, that love my kind of work, they will come. And that has proven for me to be true. I also had big, big fears of failure, of course, right? My business that I had before that felt like it failed. It didn't fail in a sense of numbers because it got a big payout, right? But it felt like failure because I couldn't continue with it in the way that I wanted because our biggest client decided to not to work with us anymore, which also meant I had to let my team go. That situation in itself felt absolutely like dying. And my family also didn't understand the situation. So they also felt like did Evelyn went bankrupt, right? And that was also kind of like the storyline. <laughs> Although I explained that, but it was, it, it, I felt so, when that happened, I felt like this can never, ever happen again, right? But when you feel like that, you're also not starting something new, right? Because if failure is an option, which it always is, and I keep telling myself, I can never feel so broken again, I can never lose my identity like this again, then you won't take the risk, right? And for me, a lot of the work that needed to happen was to say my identity is not attached to the business, right? My identity, this is also why I am documenting my personal growth journey and I'm doing business alongside of it. But my also my personal growth journey is not necessarily in that way 
my identity is not attached to my business. My personal growth journey is attached to my business. My identity is attached to my personal growth journey. But if my business fails, I, it doesn't mean that I do not deserve to walk the face of the earth, right? So it's uh, that was a lot about finding grace for myself and also seeing a failure as a stepping stone to success. I was able to translate this disappointment that I had also, for example, for my former business partner's behavior, etc. Right. So no matter where they're coming from, right, everybody has their unique perspectives. And uh, I have mine, they have theirs, right? I do not want to judge, but I, I want to, what I, what I managed to do was taking my disappointment and using that kind of as rocket fuel and saying, you know what, in a few years, what I lost here will not even be a month. And it was true, right? What I lost there in a few years, later was not even a month there so i tried to use that adversity as fuel and i tried to frame every failure as oh this is just a lesson i needed to learn um to be able to be in the places where i want to go um and you know all of that might sound like a lot of mindset fluff but as you go and you progress and you actually experience that and you actually reach those kind of income levels and 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 team size and customer size you'll learn that it actually wasn't fluff. It was actually exactly the right thing. You were just not able to see how it plays out in practice, which is which was me. I always was like every single course, I was like, okay, this is mindset, this is mindset. Or let me get, get into the, <laughs> the actual stuff <laughs> without understanding that this, act, this is a huge portion of the actual stuff and you cannot properly execute the other thing without uh, having your, your mindset in check. Um, I had the fear of overwhelm, right? So that comes a little bit later when you grow your business and then uh, you feel like I can't handle more clients. That also came uh, with me in connection with a few fears, fear of being disappointed, fear of being preyed upon, fear of legal issues. And that was because I had made that experience with building a team and with former business partner, right? So that I if I am reaching the point again where I'm generating so much and having such an inflow that I will not be able to handle alone anymore, I will rely, have to rely on other people. And relying on other people is not safe because you might get illegal issues. You, you might get heartbroken, disappointed about that. Uh, you might be preyed upon. You might be taken advantage of. So that that kind of was this, this big fear complex of not wanting to have to build a team anymore, right? And I could absolutely not run my business the way I do if I wouldn't have a team. And in fact, I was capped at $30,000 a month when I was like, I got COVID and I was like, okay, I need a team. I need, I need to just do it again. Uh, so I really pushed myself with the back against the wall. I should have started this process half a year earlier at least, right? Um, but, you know, I was too scared. And then I really, again, had to push my whole body and business with the back against the wall to say, I actually need to do this right now. And then two months after that, I didn't have a $30,000 month. I had a hundred thousand dollar month. I tripled my business because I, I was having a team. And what happened with my team? I got a little bit disappointed with some situations along the way. I got a little bit taken advantage with some situations, some people along the way, and I did not die, right? So I think a, a huge portion of my of overcoming my fear of being visible was to actually expose myself to the situation, seeing that both can be true, that your fears can, come, be, can become reality, but you can also handle it, right? And I think that's the, the takeaway next to the other points that I have here in the video of, you know, fear of being attacked, which happens a lot under your ads or fear of, of being perceived as greedy when you, when you make money or the fear of, um, you know, not being enough, all of those, the, the, the main point I could go in those and, and probably make a separate video for each of this. But the main point of this video is that the answer to my personal situation with the fear of being visible was break it down, understand it, lean into it, expose myself to that situation, say, okay, it actually is not only a fear, there is really significant trade-off in being visible, but I can handle it. 
I can, I can handle whatever is coming my way. And where I want to go in my life, the person I want to become is exactly this strong. And for that situation that happened today, I might have not been strong enough because I had to cry for a few hours. But tomorrow I can pick myself up, right? It's like tearing a muscle in the gym because you you work out. Like that the, the growth happens because you inflict those micro injuries, right? And today it might feel like this broke me and I can never pick myself up from that. But tomorrow you eventually will, right? And what also comes with you being more visible and you being exposed to envy, hate, overwhelm, miscommunication right off very often there is no no malicious anything in there it's just different perspectives collide right and and you amass a lot of attention on yourself and you're out there with your opinions well of course people have different opinions right it's what what feels so so like you're drowning is the is the mass of people right because because when things really take off for you there is a massive like when you get out there and th th then there's a massive thing back and that can feel like a big wave overrolling you but what's also true is that with all those things that can happen within the fear and all of those things that might realize alongside with that is that your income and impact increase equally so what also happens on the other side while well, you get well you know shit has a fence over there love and positive feedback and support come in from the other side. Today, uh, um, I was a little bit down today, um, and I just opened the Facebook groups, and there was so much love from the community coming. There was one person that was like, "You literally changed my life." You can you can watch that post on on the on my Instagram, and I was I was asking myself, which is also why I ultimately made this video. Yes, you have those challenges, right? And and those fears realized to a certain extent. But look at what you got in return, right? And it reminds me so much about what I always tell people when they run ads and when they're like upset because their ad got rejected or the negative comment under the ad or it's not converting and now they have to try another thing. I always tell them Facebook ads is one of the biggest opportunities that we ever had as small businesses to grow and to change our lives, literally, right? It comes with a set of trade-offs. And isn't that okay? Because we get this insane opportunity instead. And the same, I want to think about this situation. P building your personal brand and putting yourself out there. When have we been in times where little Evelyn from Austria, who, you know, who, who am I, right? No, nobody and special at all. Look at the opportunities that I was able to create for myself through this. When have we ever been in, an, in a DNH where we were able to do this so easily and where we are able to get so much, so much in return, so many, not only the money, but the impact that we can have, the, the way in which we can actualize ourselves and, and live our dreams. When have we ever had such an opportunity? Of course, it has to come with trade-offs right? So yes, and, and yes, you get a lot of hate. I am not responding personally to my Facebook ad comments anymore. I'm not even reading them because random strangers will post pooping dogs below your ad. And then they will say, you asked on my timeline, I'm just returning the favor. You'll get an insane amount of hate from people that have never heard from you before because they need an outlet, right? You're the, you're the manager that many Karen just want to speak to today. And that's an, and and also you will also get valid criticism and and validate because you cannot be perfect. Nobody can. We can all just try, but you 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 will eventually make mistakes. So let me just quickly drive this home with those affirmations that hopefully empower you when you are tend to limit yourself. Okay. So first thing is you. One more time before I share. First thing is, your fear of being visible is real and it's legit and it's okay to have it. Your fear of being visible probably consists of a set of sub-fears and limiting beliefs, right? A limiting belief does not mean that the belief is untrue. It just means the way you think about this thing that can also be true 
limits yourself, right? So I want to very, very clearly make that uh, differentiation. Limiting belief does not mean what you believe is untrue. It means the way you think about that limits you. So it makes sense to replace that belief with something that is more empowering for you. And this is what we do. Okay. So, and I personally, I do not like when somebody is not validating my fears because I'm an anxious person. Like you cannot. And I also am, you know, living a lot up here as you can probably, as my, my, many of my coaches can tell, um, I'm living a lot up here. If it's logically making sense that this is legit concern, you can't talk me out of it. Right. So you have to let me have it. But also let me know, well, there's a more empowering way uh, for you to think about it that will let you approach the problem in a way that you can solve it that is ultimately better for you and better for everyone. And this is what we do, right? So I'm not taking away your concerns, not taking away your fears. I'm just giving you a more empower or more empowering thoughts to approach them. Okay, so for me, it was... I acknowledge my fear of judgment and commit to sharing my expertise regardless. Rejection is a possibility, but it won't deter me from showing up. Failure is a part of the journey. Each setback teaches me something valuable. I may feel overwhelmed, but I trust myself to build systems that handle growth. I may feel overwhelmed. Uh, authenticity is my choice and expanding my reach won't compromise who I am. Exposure comes with risks, but also with the opportunity to impact more lives. I can be financially successful without compromising my values and mission. More money brings more responsibility and I'm capable of managing it wisely. I, feel in, I may feel inadequate at times, but I'm deserving of success and abundance. Criticism can be tough, but my message is too important to be silenced. I'm enough as I am, and I have valuable insights to share. I can't please anyone, but I can always do my best. I acknowledge safety concerns and take responsible steps to protect myself. I set strong boundaries to protect myself from being taken advantage of. I'm cautious in my interactions, but won't stop me from forming meaningful connections. Legal challenges can be daunting, but I will take steps to protect myself and my business. Visibility is intimidating, yet it's essential for my growth and impact. Networking may be outside my comfort zone, but it's crucial for my business. I trust my core values to guide me even as I innovate and update my courses. Investing in advertising is a calculated risk for greater visibility. I acknowledge the fear of undercharging and commit to valuing my work appropriately. Financial planning is, necessary, is a necessary step towards my freedom and growth. Investing in my business is investing in my future. I won't shy away from topics that matter, even if they invite criticism. Expanding my product line allows me to serve my audience in new ways. Setting higher goals is commitment to my own potential. Public appearances are a powerful way to connect and I take a step to ensure my safety. Due diligence is my ally in forming beneficial partnerships. I'm much more selective about the people that I work with in any sort of form. Networking beyond uh, my comfort zone opens doors for new opportunities. Regular checkups are a proactive measure to protect my business. Uh, regular legal checkups are a proactive measure to protect my business. At one point in your business, you just have to get on a legal retainer. You just have to build your legal team. You just have to start with working with and communicating with your lawyers very frequently. Uh, being promotional is not being pushy. I, it's sharing what I can offer. I set up ambitious goals because I'm capable of achieving them. Acknowledging my fears is the first steps to act courageously in spite of them. So the answer is act courageously in spite of your fears. That has been what helped me. And I wish I was more proactively courageous so I didn't have to always create messed up situations for myself where I'm with my back against the wall and I have no other choice but being courageous, right? So I see how I manifested some of those situations to get my guts up <laughs> and, and act courageously. Um, you can do that more proactively and I strive to do that. And I hope that, 
I hope that some of those affirmations resonate with you and empower you. As always, it's just an invitation to pick and invite what feels right to you. And yeah, I hope that some of my hiccups are and sharing those will shortcut your way. Okay, let me just quickly see. Fear of other entrepreneurs being jealous, I understand that. You know, there's another layer to this is um, when you have like your entrepreneurial group in the beginning and it feels so good to be connected and then you start outgrowing and you see how you're, you kind of cause people to feel bad about themselves and their own progress. That is in itself, you know, even if they don't jealous, like if they're not jealous of you, you'll still see how your growth is kind of making them self-doubt. And that's that in itself also something that always um, made me feel bad about my own growth and in that sort a little bit uh, harming it or limiting it. I fear being vis uh, fear being visible, but can never seem to get rid of it. I don't like my voice and I'm never happy with my videos, but I know I have to just do it. That's one of the reasons why I started going on to my videos without makeup, because, um, you know, I feel really subconscious about this. I've been wearing makeup since I was, I think, 11 or 12 when my acne started to kick in and I got bullied like a lot in school. So I'm quite subconscious about that. And I thought like, what's the worst thing that can happen? It's like people see me, once people have like seen me without anything, then what worse can kind of happen, right? So I try, I try to really push over that. And now I'm very often jumping on without makeup. And, you know, it just allowed me to, to, to be much more flexible and consistent with that. So what, whichever, and you know, the first videos that I did was just on Instagram with filters, cause I couldn't even go on um, with makeup without filter on Instagram. That's how insecure I was about that. But you know, it's like, a, like I said, it's a little bit of exposure therapy. For me, that was kind of what really, really helped me. Yeah, baby steps, right? We can, we can just take baby steps towards that. This affirmation explain everything I feel and experience. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, love. I hope they help you. I'm trying to. I wish I was more, but I'm learning. Yes, fears are real. Acknowledging makes better shifts versus try to will it out. Yeah, I learned for myself. You cannot talk me out of that. And the more I'm, the more I'm trying to talk it away, the louder they become because they're like, no, no. <laughs> the the more I try to push it away, the louder it gets. So for me, saying yep. Okay, but let me like make the equation, right? If all of that happens, would it still be worth it? And then I'm like, ah, oh, it still will be worth it, right? And it, that, that also comes down to just the radical acceptance of life will never be perfect. Your business will never be perfect. Or that it will, it, it will always be perfectly imperfect. It will always come with beautiful moments and with messed up trade-offs. Situations where you're like, what the? And then, and that's just the reality at every level. You can't run away from that. Okay, you guys, that was it for now. I promise to keep it under half an hour. So I'm doing just that. And I wish you a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you for tuning in. Bye for now.